It's time for another tournament in a tea break. It's another late finish for myself, Ros Satar, and I am joined by... Chris Otto. Who is back amongst us after the ravaging whining of George Belshaw. We love you, George, <laughs> but it was it was, it was was George Angry Man, which is very funny because I love it when he gets all ranty. However, we're much more zen tonight. I think so. I think so. In general. In general. And we're almost at the end of the first week. So, um, in a day where yet another seed on the women's side went go bye-bye, it's, uh, well, I mean, basically this draw is now opening up for one 25-seeded Miss Serena Williams, or Mrs. Williams, as as she's called. Oh, it's, boy, the seas are parting for Serena. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm just looking. There's, there's herself, and there's no other seeds in her quarter. And the only other seeds are above her, I think. Gurgas and Pliskova, no? Yeah, and... Yep, uh, Kiki, Kiki Burton's is in there at number 20, but looks nice for Serena seed-wise. Briefly touching on that the whole WTA situation mm. with now seven of the top ten seeds out. I think they're... I, I no, checked, it's eight now. With Venus out, you're right. I, yeah. checked, I checked with Chris Whitmore, and he was saying that never before had less than four of the top eight seeds made it through to the... Um, yeah. To the round of 16. Never. And then he said the last time that three or less, I think, had gone through to the round of 16 was 2015 US Open. I was surprised. But before that, all the way back to 2001 Roland Garros. So this is pretty rare. Wow. What's happening here? I have to go back and check 2015 US Open. That must have been chaotic as well. Not surprising that there was another one. It's been that that kind of vibe. Well, we we almost lost. We almost ended up with... um, only one of the top eight. Oh, well, actually, only one of the top ten. Uh, because Carolina Pliskova was all at sea against Berzinescu. I mean, that was how she came back. It actually should, you know, if it doesn't kill you, it should make you stronger. Um, and I think she will come out of that uh, encounter the stronger for it. Because Berzinescu's had a great grass court season. She's had a great clay court season. She's... One of those players, you know, she will fight to the death. Mm, um, is, and that was that was that was some match. This is a gr- so far a great tournament for Pliskova just to finally make the third round and then to do this in the third round. Yeah, um, but, I can't wait to ask on Manic Monday what it's like to make the second week of Wimbledon. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, welcome to the second week. What have you done? <laughs> um, but let's let's talk about Serena. I mean. Kiki really um, really pushed her hard I mean Kiki had the upper hand in that first set and uh, for Williams to come back again she plays herself into into form uh, but it, for, for all the world it looked like both Williams were going to be out to Kiki's yeah interesting Kiki's good Kiki plays Serena tough she comes out with a good attitude I, I like to see that from her I wish she played like that more often with that kind of that kind of fire and Intensity. She's puzzling at, at a lot of the time. Um, yeah. But as far as Serena goes, I think another step. She served a little harder. I was kind of ma- watching her stats for her first serve speed. They've gone up. They've increased incrementally each round. She's she's looking strong overall. Uh, she was broken twice today. Got into a little bit of a scuffle, but she'll probably emerge, you know, a little bit stronger from having a yep. close match. I think a close match is a good thing. She's got Rodina next, and then the Georgie Makarova winner. It's so hard to picture her now. I mean, t- yeah. correct me if I'm wrong. It's difficult to picture her not winning this. Certainly difficult to picture her not being in the semis. Yeah, she's in really good shape. She's. I mean, don't don't count out Rodina because I mean that was that was a, that was a strange match against Keys. Uh, you know, Keys looked in control. She then lost something like nine games on the bounce. She did. I mean, I literally looked away for a second and thought, ah, Keys started to write. Next time I looked up, Rodina had the first set and she was four love up. And I was just sitting there thinking, how long was, how long was I actually doing stuff? Mm. Um, and then it must be so frustrating for Keys to come back to make it competitive again and then to to lose it. But she admitted that she started to allow herself to think about the fourth round 
and Serena, uh, a match up with Serena. And she just, and the match just drifted away from her. Uh, she's young and she'll learn to not do that. But will she? I think she will. I hope she does. I would be very upset if she didn't because that, that what a mistake to make her. You know, she, that was... Yeah, I mean, she she looked very close to the edge of tears in a, a press conference. She held it; she was holding it together well, but she, a couple of times, she looked like it was, you know, she looked like a, a young little kid again, where she just was unprepared for this kind of like scrutiny. Yeah. But I think we're hard on Keys because we see that jaw dropping power. We see mm. what she's capable of doing when she's really on, and and it's frustrating that to know that she can't do it on a consistent basis. It's frustrating to know that the ball seems to need to be in her wheelhouse. And it, and, and I think if it's not, then the balls get sprayed. She made some errors that were just oh, icky. Yeah. And then toward the icky. end of the match, she missed she missed a volley, I think, that would have given her a 15-40 late to, for yeah. a break back. And, and it was just, there was just no excuse to miss it. It was such a non-championship type of play. It was very disappointing. But Rodina has won now three three setters. She qualified here. She showed a little wear and tear on the body. She struggled a bit. I don't know what she's going to yeah. be able to bring to Signorina, but what an awesome effort. She's steady. Yeah. She's consistent. She's feisty. There's a lot to like about her. Nobody's talking about her. No. You know, she'll be able to... It, it, you know, it'll be a free hit for her. Yeah. Uh, she's a fellow mom, so they can like exchange diaper tips at the net you know it'll be lovely i mean <laughs> um Bakarova and georgie should be quite entertaining if nothing else a little bit head casey uh, and again that was another match like Cini with the good hair Cini Kova uh, was hair. was doing so well and then all of a sudden georgie was doing her usual sea ball hit ball hope good hope ball go, go in ball go in yay repeat lather rinse repeat um you know so Oh, God, who knows? But I, I would be genuinely gobsmacked if Serena didn't come out of that quarter in one mm. piece. Might have been some of my favorite tennis of the day between Georgie and Cindy with the nice hair on court 18. They were cracking the balls. I think it was a second set breaker, was it? or a, where, No, it was third set where it was tight. There wasn't a second set breaker. Yeah, there or, was. Well, no, there was. There was a second set breaker, which was just ridiculous, the ball striking in the, some of those rallies. I think there was one where Georgie didn't get a set point and... and my gosh, I don't know how she didn't get it because she hit about 15 great baseline <laughs> strikes and then she just threw a racket at the end in frustration. She is just a strange human to me, but I love her. I do love watching her. I don't like talking to her in press, oh. it, but <laughs> but I love watching her play. She's, uh, a, she's a fantastic those player. Those press conferences are something else though, aren't they? To one word answers, yes. It's like, oh, how did you play? Yes, I play. <laughs> okay. Did you play well? Yes, I play well. Yeah. Okay. Um... Will you play good next time? Yes, I play good. Okay. Well, I'm glad that we cleared that up. Okay. Um, so, uh, on to the other side, though, of the draw. Let's have a little quick flick through to... Um, the Manly Men? Oh, yeah, we can go to the Manly Men because they were the other people playing. I was going to say about Halep, but we can worry about her tomorrow. Mm. Uh, the Manly Men. I'll tell you who I'm excited to see now. It's Titi Pass. Well, who isn't at this point? I, and, and if anybody that... <laughs> hasn't gotten wind of him just start tuning in or go yeah. back and watch some of the highlights from his first three rounds he's amazing he's electrifying he is he really is uh i think he's going to frustrate the living hell out of isna because i think he's going to be diving and throwing himself around all over the place yeah and i think that's going to piss isna off i think i think is in a good spot but yeah i think he'll be envious of the athleticism of Sitsipas. <laughs> i think that, that is so well put <laughs> um but you know Sitsipas is Played well to, to win his first Wimbledon main draw match and now make the second week. And that's a huge milestone. Yeah. He's the first Greek to, to make the second week male, first Greek male to make the second week of a major in the open era. And he's an awesome player and he's got a bright future. However, he's a genuinely nice kid. He's a really nice kid, down to earth, humble, everything you would want. You know, if you were a parent and he was your son, you'd be very proud. But he's not holding serve all that often. He's been broken eight times already this uh, tournament. And I think that's fine for the topsy-turvy matches he's had, but he better be careful against John Isner. One break is a set, mm -hmm. and three breaks is a match, and it can happen fast. Yeah. He's not going to get... He's been breaking a lot. He's been returning really well. I think he's fourth in among the ATP players in returns put in play. He's kind of been laying back and kind of like, kind of carving up uh, like block returns and being really effective with it, and he's mobile back there. He's been yeah. playing really smart on grass, but it's going to be a different challenge against Isner, and I hope he's got a big, strong, 
thump serving practice partner for the weekend mm. to spend some time with. Good. One match that didn't compete, well, com- complete even, was Ravnitch, who is remarkably still in one piece, and the other Novak. Were, were, and this is where it confuses me because it's Novak D or D, <laughs> yeah, or D Novak. Anyway, that guy uh, and Ravnitch are still still played. That was called, I think, after three sets. Uh, they haven't finished the third. They're on serve at, uh, after eleven games of the third. Somebody's serving at five, okay. five six, okay. which is a silly place. Maybe to stop Ravnitch it, really. actually thought it was Novak Djokovic, which is why he lost the second set. <laughs> it's it's a silly place to stop it. They should have closed it at that that set that thing it would have been a good idea it wasn't that dark but maybe it was so were you surprised by guy on one piece beating query yeah i I mean i'm not like shocked you know we know how good guy can be on a good day and he had a good day and i guess query's time as a wimbledon stud has come to an end (laughs) quarters and 16 semis and 17 i didn't think i'd ever hear (laughs) Query is a Wimbledon stud. Oh, um, oh, that's an image that's going to stay with me, and I won't sleep at all Quer- tonight. Query's time is up for the time being, at least. And Gael, like um, we were talking about earlier, didn't always love the grass, didn't feel comfortable on it. Maybe he's a little more comfortable now. We know how good he can be mm. on any surface against anybody, so it's cool. You know, yeah. here he goes up against, and he's got another big server, Kevin Anderson. Maybe he can uh, lightning will strike twice, and he'll beat the next big server. Yeah, I mean, I think so. I think. Um... Yeah, you know, and then we got obviously Roger who breezed past the baby face Jan Leonard Struff, and he will be against Adrian Manorino, formerly of the Good Hair. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's interesting. I'm beginning to feel the same way about certainly this half of the men's draw as I felt about Roland Garros and an air of tedious inevitability that we're going to see Roger Federer <laughs> in the final. Um, if not holding um, a bit of silverware or indeed gilded goldware aloft. It just feels like it's inevitable and there's no sense of excitement. Certainly with Chilich having gone, there's nobody that really can bring bring something to the table immediately. I mean, if Pass makes it, it will be highly entertaining, but, you know, Federal will just school him. He's going to beat Manorino quite simply. You know, maybe Kevin Anderson could give him a bit of entertainment. Maybe, maybe. if he wins. If he wins. But, you know, Monfils would just frustrate him and he would just play along until he gets annoyed. Um, Mackenzie McDonald or, well, let's, let's just say Raonic in, in that element. Raonic is the only other player that I think could probably trouble him. Yeah. If he can keep himself healthy. Fair enough. I think the only drama is whether or not Federer will break his own record for consecutive yeah. sets won at Wimbledon. That's 34 sets. He's now at 29. So if he reaches the semis without dropping a set, that'll be our drama for Roger Federer. Yeah. And, I, you know, it's like, okay, that that's not really a drama, but okay. No, dogs. it's not. It's it's, not. It's, it's it's a shame because I think, you know, and, and it's not Roger's fault. At the end of the day, he can only play who's over the other side of the net. So it's not, it's not his fault that, you know, that Chilich went out to Peo, who then went out fairly meekly to Mackenzie McDonald. So, and you see that a lot. There'll be a big upsetting um, result and then that guy will just bow out meekly and it's, it's a shame. Yeah. Um, all the challengers are on the other side of the draw, they obviously. Are. They are, they uh, are. For our purposes, of course, we're talking Novak Djokovic versus our very own Kyle Edmund. Now, Edmund beat them, beats him on their last outing in the altitude zippy balls of Madrid. Now, Kyle plays well on clay. I think that's probably his favourite surface. But Madrid plays so quickly, the balls zip about so fast, you have to wonder whether it plays more like a bit of a speedy hard court. Um, because because everything just whizzes by. Be- Rafa doesn't like it. He can't control the balls. Mm-hmm. And for me, the whole clay court season was just a little too soon for Djokovic after his surgery to, to come back. And I always said, this is just too soon. Roland Garros is a slam too soon, but wait till he gets on the grass. And as, as much as I think that Carl's improved, his backhand has improved a lot, his confidence has improved... I'm going to have to say that I think it's Djokovic. I have to agree with you. I think 
Novak Djokovic has done what we've been waiting for him to do, which is completely dominate some opponents, and that's what he's done in the first two rounds. He's lost 12 games in two rounds. I think he's won more than 70% of his return games. He's leading the, the, the ATP side, and, and everybody actually in terms of return games won. He's been ridiculous. He looks comfortable. He's moving quickly. He's doing his Gumby thing. He's, there's just one hang-up. And that's that he had a little bit of an injury to his left knee at the end of his match against Zabios, and he did not look good in that match for the next two games. He somehow was able to break and hold and win that, that match going away. But I watched those two games closely. He favored that knee the whole time. I just don't know how he's going to turn up in round three. And if it, it could be an issue, I'm hoping it's not. I want to see him at his best, and then I want to see... What did, what did Carol say about his um, training? Carol said he looked fine. She seemed to think it was a no-worry issue, but she said she also mentioned he didn't really run around too much in the practice. So right. I think we're not going to know for sure until this match gets underway. It's probably one of the... I'm guessing 95% sure he's okay, but there's a little bit of worry that... I don't know. He's older. Yeah. Here's what I think is going to go down. I think that Khan is going to come out. He's going to have. He's going to be on centre court again, um, which I think he's only played once before, um, and he really, in, you know, I think in his last match, and it really was a huge sort of boost to him. Uh, he's going to be with a massive crowd behind him, uh, and I think that's going to make a huge difference uh, in that in that kind of pressure bowl. Uh, the, of course, England are playing, so there's going to be that whole element of national fervor mm -hmm. and craziness that's going on. Um, we saw it again at the Olympics. We saw that Roger Federer had, for the first time ever in South Southwest 19, didn't have anybody cheering for him. And you know that that's an incredible thing that because was, normally that was when it very incredible, but it it, it made. It actually made the hairs on my neck just sort of stand up on end when I was watching it because, you know, it's it was so alien <laughs> to see an entire centre court crowd, one hundred and ten percent behind Andy. I've never seen anything like it. I don't think I ever will. You and it see. and it was straight after Super Saturday as well. So I I think there's an untold element of some kind of England. World Cup. I mean, I forget about the fact that his coach is Swiss, and after this, he might not have a coach, depending on what the result is. <laughs> However, um, I think what's going to happen is that Edmund is going to take the first set off him. Really? I do. I think he's going to come out firing. I think he's going to. I think he's going to do what he did to uh, Dimitrov, which is just come out hit free, and he's just going to take the first set off him. And I think that's going to frustrate. I mean, we've seen what I think I loved was we've seen feisty Djokovic back. Yeah, like pissy Djokovic who gets really angry at mm -hmm. everything and like all but rends his garment in rage. Yeah, he's been close. Um, and I love it when he's like that because then you get to see the real Djokovic and he really brings his best tennis. I think I think Carl's going to take the first set and then I'm going to see. Uh, I think Djokovic is just going to do his incredible Hulk thing and he's just going to go postal on mm. Carl and take the next three sets. But I also think that Carl's going to push him close. I think there's going to be a big, big test for Djokovic. I think this is going to be one of the matches of the uh, of the tournament. It's yeah, I'm excited for it as well. I mean, I think that Novak has just week by week incrementally become much closer to where we saw him two years ago, and I think he's. I feel like he's ready to make a step and possibly win this tournament. He's looked that good in these two matches Absolutely. against not the best competition, but this is where we get to see where he's really at yeah. because Kyle is having a fantastic yeah. year. A few ups and downs, but first Grand Slam semi this year, he's one heck of a player. He's got the one of the biggest forehands on tour, and he's confident, and yeah, it's a great match. It's going to be very exciting. I just, I'm curious to your comments about the fervor of the English crowd. I wonder how they'll get behind him. I wonder if they'll realize that they can really help create something big here. I think they, I think they will. I think, um, I think there's a lot of disappointment, and uh, you know, whilst I think a lot of people understand Andy's decision not to play, th there was a lot of intense disappointment, and I think with Joe having gone out so so soon as well, you know, I mean, we had twelve people. 12 people in the main draw and by the second round it was just Kyle yeah. and we've been in this situation so many times with Andy where that he was like the last man standing after one round so they will just throw themselves behind him and I think he's I think he's going to come out swinging one thing that interested me that you said was about Nick Kyrgios um having a losing record to Nishikori which does surprise me yeah. but Nishikori is nimble he's super precise and I can imagine how that would 
flummox Kyrgios. So that will be an interesting match. Yeah, it's another one we're looking forward to. I think Kyrgios is one of the, the players where we probably need to see one or two more wins before we really can get behind him and back him as a potential finalist, or, yeah. you know, or get get to his well, first Grand, Grand Slam semi, something like that. Um, expect him to beat Nishikori based on what I've seen recently. But, you know, he could flip in. He could throw in one of those bad matches that he has yeah. done before. So... That's it's going to be. There's a. I like this half of the draw. I like tomorrow's men's action a lot more mm-hmm. than I like today's in terms of like excitement level. Of course, we had Sitsipas today. We talked about him, but tomorrow Dimitar Nadal is exciting. Yeah. Yuri Vesely was has been very good on grass. He's playing Fonini. That could be interesting. Juan Martín Del Potro. We haven't spoken about him a lot, but no. he is in very good form yeah. right now. I think he's uh, out of the people that I think are going to come out of this. I I I would say it's Nadal. Del Potro or Djokovic, maybe Kyrgios at a push. Mm-hmm. We also got Sasha Zverev. Yeah, just... but if he keeps doing these five setters, he's just going to fall apart. No, so. I agree. He's going five tomorrow with Gulbis. Yeah. For sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but um, but e- e- either way, I mean, I think <laughs> George, um, George Ranting notwithstanding, today just did feel like a little bit of filler. It did. It didn't. It didn't. Re- you know, I I looked at the draw and said today's a catch up day, and it was. Uh, I think tomorrow is going to be a, a super day across across the board. Uh, a real treat, I think, for people. Do we know who's on? Who's where? Oh yeah. Um, Nadal, then Kerber, then Kyle, on center. That's a very nice center court. Yeah, I mean Kerber and Osaka could go oh, could go three sets, and that's going to be me more. Yeah, that's, that's going to be that. a great one. And Angie is uh, for- th- fortunately for her, she's the eleventh seed, so she doesn't have to worry about this whole top ten seed thing. But also, I think I think the draw. Well, I, was, I spoke to a German colleague of mine who said because oh, I said the draw's opening up nicely for her. She goes, "Yeah, the thing is, though, Angie knows it, which is bad." Oh. But uh, but yeah, so tomorrow you you have Alex de Manor, um Rafael Nadal, and then Kerber, Osaka, and then Kyle and Djokovic on court number one. You have Simona Halep versus Shea, Gilbis versus Zverev, and Nick Kyrgios and Nishikori to close on court number two, Del Potro and Pear. Uh, <laughs> it depends on whether Pear can actually um, mummify himself. Uh, Sibulkova and Mertens. Now that's going to be a good one because obviously Domi's playing extremely well. She really is. Uh, doubles. Murray and Suarez were in excellent form today. And a lot of the uh, double seats have fallen by the wayside. So this could be a really good run for them. Uh, number three court. Oh, that'll be a good one. Barty oh. versus Kasakina. Oh, boy. That's a good set. That's the one at 11.30 that I'll be putting on my screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Likewise. Uh, Ostapenko via, uh, versus Daichenko and then Vesely Fonini well mm, okay mm. <laughs> uh, I'm not even going to try Van Oytbank in any other kind of way versus Contivate mm-hmm. Raonic and Novak to finish the other Novak I hasten to add uh, CSN and Bencic now yeah. Belinda Bencic that's going to be an interesting one yeah Belinda likes the grass uh, and I feel, I'm actually kind of keen to see what Francis what Big Foe Big Foe does very nice to see Big Foe this far along in the draw. I believe we have a visitor. I believe we have a visitor. Um, so let's try and wrap things up there because any minute now we're going to have a guest come walking <laughs> through the door. Uh, you have, of course, been listening to Roz Sattar from Britwatch Sports. And Chris Sattar from Tennis Now. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Goodbye. Good night.